All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to talk about the mysterious function with very surprising properties. Namely, this function will be non-zero and yet all its derivatives at zero will vanish. And in fact, this is a function you may all have seen before, which is e to the minus 1 over x. More precisely, let f of x be e to the minus 1 over x if x is positive, and 0 if x is less than or equal to 0. And this is sometimes called a transition function because it transitions from 0 to basically 1. So this is the function here. And what I'll show now is that all the derivatives of f at 0 are 0. And then I'll give you some cool consequences of this. OK, so claim. Let's first of all show that f prime of 0 equals 0. Okay. Why? In that case, just use the limit definition of the derivative. So limit x goes to 0 of f of x minus f of 0 over x minus 0. But f, by definition, is defined to be 0 at 0. So this is just limit x goes to 0 of f of x over x. And well, if x is negative, then this is 0 anyway. So really, the interesting case is if x goes to 0 from the right. So let's do limit x goes to 0 plus of that, which is limit x goes to 0 plus of e of minus 1 over x over x. And I'm claiming that this is 0. And if you try L'Hopital's rule, you'll see it doesn't really work. Instead, notice the following cool trick. And I didn't know about this until I saw Wikipedia. It's quite nice. Because consider 1 over x. Well, on the one hand, it is positive, since x goes to 0 plus. On the other hand, try to write this as x times 1 over x squared. And even better, let's try to write this as 2x times 1 over 2, 1 over x squared. But notice here, 2 is 2 factorial. Well, and what does that look like? It looks almost like the part of the Maclaurin series of e to the 1 over x. Because what this is, this then becomes less than or equal to 2x times the sum of all those terms. So sum k from 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial, 1 over x to the k. We're just summing up a bunch of positive terms. And again, by the definition of the Maclaurin series, this becomes 2x e of 1 over x. So what have we shown? We've shown that 1 over x is squeezed between 0 and 2x e to the 1 over x. But here's a cool thing. Well, now we can divide both sides by e to the 1 over x. And then what we get is 0 is less than or equal to e of minus 1 over x over x, which is less than or equal to 2x. And now, simply by using the squeeze theorem, we ultimately obtain that this limit goes to 0. So in other words, f prime of 0 is 0. And the cool thing is, which I'll show in a second, is that the same thing is true for all the derivatives of f at 0. So claim the nth derivative of f equals 0 for all uh, n. But before I show this, okay, um, let me just remark, so why is that so cool? So let me finally tell you why it's really neat. Because remember what the Maclaurin series of a function is. The Maclaurin series is just the sum from n from 0 to infinity 
of the nth derivative of f at 0 over n factorial times x to the n. And the question is, does this Maclaurin series actually approximate f well or not? Because for e to the x, it's actually a very good approximation. You can show that for every x, it goes to e to the x. But look, for this function, what happens? Well, on the one hand, we have f of x. On the other hand, by this claim, all the derivatives of f at 0 are 0. So this Maclaurin series becomes the sum from n from 0 to infinity of 0, x to the n, which is identically equal to the 0 function which I hope you agree is not a good approximation to the function at all. Because again, the function was going like this, and we're saying, well, it's approximately equal to this. Again, not very good. And this is what's called a non-analytic function. So it's a function whose Taylor series doesn't go to f at all. Even though, interestingly, this function is infinitely differentiable. So we do have to distinguish between the two. At least in the real case, because it turns out for complex functions, those two things are the same. In other words, if a function is complex differentiable, then it is actually analytic. How cool is that? And a couple of other remarks, and again, I promise I will prove this in a second. Here we found a function that is, if you're not analytic at zero, well, it turns out you can also construct a function that is non-analytic everywhere. I will not do it, but it turns out if you define capital F of x to be the sum from n from zero to infinity of e of minus square root of two to the n cosine of 2nx, so it gets kind of, you. Um, what happens here is not you stretch, you compress cosine by a lot, but e makes it kind of smaller, if you wish, then it turns out, maybe there's a, a factor of x here, I'm not sure, uh, then it turns out this function is nowhere analytic. How cool is that? And I think you can prove it I think, using Fourier series. But I can, outside of my domain. And another remark I want to mention also, before I lose all of you, <laughs> is, well, this function, e to the minus 1 over x, that was a transition function, it is related to what's called a bump function. Because if you're on a function that kind of looks like this, smooth but has a bump, then all you can do, you can define e to the minus 1 over 1 minus x squared on minus 1 comma 1 and then 0 everywhere else, then this is what's called a bump function. And it is extremely important in topology or PDEs for sure. And let me tell you why, because I do study PDEs. Well, usually it's hard to control the behavior or solutions at infinity especially for given functions and stuff. But those bump functions are extremely important because they tell you, well, we're literally cutting everything off at uh, you know, infinity. So we just care about what happens at, you know, locally. So for local things, bump functions are very good. All right, and now without further ado, let me prove this result and mm, the nice thing is it's almost identical to uh, the previous proof, but we do need a nice uh, definition for uh, the, I mean, or a nice structure of the derivative, if we wish, because look, if we have f of x equals e to the minus 1 over x, okay, then the derivative, for instance, f prime of x, is 1 over x squared e to the minus 1 over x. So what it is, it's e to the minus 1 over x times some rational function. And in fact, this is always true. So claim, 
So claim number one, I guess subclaim if you wish, the nth derivative of f at x, what it is, it's a polynomial of degree n minus 1. So p n minus 1 x over x to the 2n. So we had x squared, and this time, next time we have like x to the fourth, x to the sixth, times this function e to the minus 1 over x. Okay. Or times f of x, if you wish. And to prove this, you just use induction. So you could use, you know, at 0, it becomes f of x. This is 1, and this is a, a you know, polynomial of degree 0. So like any constant, really. So that's fine. And then for the inductive step, well, fn plus 1 of x, that is the derivative of this by inductive assumption, pn minus 1 over x to the 2n f of x prime. And then by the product rule, this becomes the derivative of this. So uh, pn minus 1 prime over x to the 2n, and then minus 2n pn minus 1 over, let's see, x to the 2n plus 1, I believe. And times f of x plus this thing, so pn minus 1 over x to the 2n f prime. But the nice thing is, what is f prime? It is, I think, 1 over x squared times f. So really what we have, again, pn minus 1 prime over x to the 2n minus 2n pn minus 1 over x to the 2n plus 1 f. Okay. Press f for function, and then plus pn minus 1 over x to the 2n and 1 over x squared times f. And the nice thing is now we can put everything on a common denominator because we can factor out f. And again, what's the common denominator where x squared times x to the 2n is x to the 2n plus 2, which is, by the way, what we want, plus 2. And then what we get is pn minus 1 prime times x squared and then minus 2nx pn minus 1, and then plus pn minus 1, just like that. All right, and as I said, this is exactly what we wanted, because we have f here, we have here x to the 2n plus 2, so 2 times n plus 1. And then I think all we need to check is that this is a polynomial of degree n, but that's not a problem, because pn minus 1 has degree n minus 1. If you differentiate this, you have degree n minus 2. And then with this plus 2, this does become degree n. Now, pn minus 1, degree n minus 1, you multiply it by x, and you get n also degree n. And this thing just has degree n minus 1. So if you add it to an nth degree polynomial, it becomes a degree, at least less than or equal to n, which is fine. All right. And so therefore, the first part of our claim is proven. And now, we'll claim number two. So let's show that fn at 0 equals 0. And here again, you prove it by induction. So we've shown that f prime of 0 equals 0. And now, what is uh, f to the n plus 1 of 0? That is the limit as x goes to 0 of fn of x minus fn at 0 over x. But by inductive hypothesis, this is 0. And as before, uh, we just care about the positive side. So 
x goes to 0 plus. And then, well, now we just need to use what we've shown before. This is limit x goes to 0 plus of okay, pn minus 1 of x over x to the 2n times f, so times e to the minus 1 over x, again, times x, if you wish, and which now becomes limit x goes to 0 plus of pn minus 1 of x times e to the minus 1 over x over x to the 2n plus 1. And essentially, it's enough to show that this goes to 0. But in fact, let me show something stronger. Let me show that e of minus 1 over x over any power of x goes to 0. And then again, we would be done because we would have 0 times a fixed polynomial. So it's fine. So and then, so again, claim number 3. Let's show that limit x goes to 0 plus of e of minus 1 over x over x to the m equals 0. And again, the proof almost identical to before. What we get is, well, um, let's start with uh, 1 over x to the m. On the one hand, it's greater or equal to 0. On the other hand, again, this is 1 over x or if you want x, sorry, times 1 over x to the m plus 1. And again, we want this exponential term to appear. So this is m plus 1 factorial times x over uh, 1 over m plus 1 factorial times 1 over x to the m plus 1. And as before, this is less to equal to that power series, m plus 1 x, m plus 1 factorial x times the sum from k from 0 to infinity, 1 over k factorial, 1 over x to the k. And this is m plus 1 factorial x times e to the 1 over x. And as before, just divide by e of 1 over x and use the squeeze theorem to finally prove this. All right, I hope you like this non-analytic adventure. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.